Hi there and welcome back to the channel. So last year, towards the end of last year, I drew this little bulldog. So for those of you that don't know, I had camera issues. Uh, my camera wasn't keeping focus throughout the recording. And when I came to actually edit the video, I realized that quite a bit of the uh, video was out of focus. So I changed my camera, changed it again since, but I changed my camera at the time and I started to draw him again. So I came across him the other day, found him in the drawer, realized he wasn't finished and that I hadn't actually uploaded all the videos. So I'm on a mission to get him finished as quickly as possible to get all the parts of the tutorial loaded up as quickly as possible for you. So you can either finish him if you've been waiting patiently for all the parts to come out or if you're new here and you've only just found him, you'll have all the parts to uh, follow through from start to finish. So just as a recap, this is the 300 GSM Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolor Paper. I have the line drawing over on my website and the link to that in the description. Okay, so let's not waste any more time and let's get started. Okay, I have my bit of glassine paper down. I'm just going to take a kneadable eraser and just knock some of these lines back. And then as we've done before... I'm going to take a warm grey one and start to add some base layer. I'm just going to work on this area here at the minute, which is his, uh, the bottom of his jaw. Let's get that warm grey one down. I've knocked back some of the lines. I'm not too worried about these little lines that are showing because this area is so dark that you're not going to see those lines. I'm not going to see those lines by the time I'm finished. So I don't need to worry. If that was, if this was going to stay a really light area, so for instance, if it was going to stay the warm grey one, you can see I would need to take them back because they, they're, they're sort of showing through. But because I know this is going to go quite dark, I really don't need to worry um, too much about those. So from the warm grey one, I can see that around here particularly, there is a bit of brown. So I'm just going in with the Van Dyke brown to add another sort of underlayer, base layer, underlayer, whatever you want to call it, just to put a touch of the brown into here. And then in with a warm grey three to bring this down, going over the, uh, the Van Dyke brown as well. So we were just using that as like an underlayer bring in the warm grey three down and being mindful of the direction of the uh, the little jaw um, even though these are under layers I'm being quite mindful not pressing on hard I am using a, quite a sharp pencil I mean, it's, it's been used on the end, the tip's been used on the end, but it's quite a sharp pencil. And just starting to bring some of this colour in. In this middle bit here where we've got the lighter areas, I don't want to completely cover up that warm grey one. I want some of that warm grey one to show through. And then in with the warm grey five to start to shape this fur a little bit. So obviously there's a bit here under the lip. I'm just going to plot that in. And that does actually go quite dark in there. That's, that goes right up into his muzzle. And then I'm just going to start to shape it so I can see that it comes around here. I can see a darker patch that comes around here. and under his muzzle here, a bit of shadow. I'm 
I'm going to go into this area here with a little bit of cold grey. I'm just going to use little circular motions. That's his lip. And that has a blue tint to it. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the cold grey in there. And then with a cold grey six, I'm just going to add a little bit of detail into that lip. And just a touch of the warm grey three in there and then back to the bit of the cold grey two. I'm going to come along here at the same time actually and just work on all of this under jaw because thinking about it once I've got my pencils out in my hand it'll be easier to just work on the um, the different areas that are all pretty much the same colour so if I put some base layer into this whole jaw under here I can work on all of that in one go. It's just a base layer. So I mean, I could use the circular motions if I wanted to put the base layer down. I could use a uh, little directional uh, strokes. It doesn't really matter. It's just the base layer. But then I am going to go in with that warm grey three and start to bring that down. And I'm using light pressure to just get a coverage over the um, the area. Back in with the cold grey six again, and now that I've put in the um, the whole of the jaw underneath, all of the base layer, I can start to plot in some of these these shadow areas and these little creases in his face, in his jaw. And as I'm plotting them, I'm just looking at what direction they're going out on the reference photograph. I've got the reference photograph uh, in front of me on my um, on my screen, and I'm just looking at I'm, I'm sort of checking the reference photograph every few strokes, just make sure that my uh, my pencil lines are going in the the right direction. And I'm going to put a little bit of base layer in there. And like I say, I'm not worried about this pencil line down here because this is in such a, a dark area that all that's going to be covered up. Sometimes I do take the pencil out. Uh, sometimes I sometimes I don't because I just know that it's going to be covered up. But I'm going back in with the warm grey three. So that's the bottom of his jaw right down there. Okay, so we've sort of plotted the sections in, so let's go back in with the warm grey five and start to bring some of this fur detail down. So I can see this little bit at the top is really quite sort of fine, tiny little, um, tiny little hairs as it comes off his lip and then the hairs get a little bit longer as we come over that jaw. So let's keep this quite quite small up here. I'm not pressing on hard, I just keep going over the area to get the the, the intensity of the colour that I want. And then as we come round, I can let those strokes get a little bit larger. longer rather than larger but longer we've still got that brown area under there that's just tinting the the gray that's going on top of it I'm 
and just bringing that colour into these sections as well. And the hair's just coming off at a slight angle in these sections. So let's just put the direction of the hairs going uh, that way. I want to take a buff titanium from the luminance range and start to blend this area. Blend these colours together. And then we're going to take the warm grey six and start to darken down some of these areas. I can see that that's the little bit there that sort of goes up into the top of the muzzle. So we'll bring a bit of shadow under there. Under his muzzle. And just go over these darker areas that we'd already put in with the previous layers. And just gently start to darken down the areas that we want darker. So this whole area is going to end up quite dark under here because it's obviously a shadow underneath his, his muzzle. Actually quite dark in there as well so let's bring the the pencil down there as it blends into that lighter area and we also blend it into this this muzzle at the bottom and this lip let's bring that round I'm just going to add a bit of definition back into that lip I don't want to lose that lip and then this dark area starts to come around here and obviously on this side of that little jaw. So I'm just looking, whilst I've got this, this pencil in my hand, this warm grey, I'm looking around the area to see where there are uh, the darker patches, the patches that sort of match the colour that I've got in my hand at the minute. And keeping a slightly lighter area in the middle he's got these white little white little hairs in the middle I'm going to take the brown ochre 10% and I'm just gently going to start to blend again those darker layers that we've just put down I'm just building up the layers filling in the tooth of the paper as we go and just creating a nice surface to add that top detail when we're ready to put the detail on top. I'm looking to fill the tooth of this paper in with these layers that I'm putting down. And that gives me a nice smooth surface that I could put the detail onto. And this little bit in the middle again, I'm just going to go back to the buff titanium to blend that again. Because obviously we want to keep that whiter, or at least we want to keep that lighter. So I want to go in with the warm grey 5. Just darken this down a little bit. Keeping these little fur strokes in the direction that I can see they're going in in the photograph. So these are sort of coming out this way a little bit and uh, on this side they're going out that way a little bit as it sort of comes around his chin and this will obviously blend into his neck down here which we'll go on to but I just thought it'd be useful to sort of get this bit finished and then we can move down onto his neck and get his jaw finished I'm going to go in with the dark sepia this time and I'm still looking for that, those dark areas under that lip, under that top lip and I can see that that actually sort of curls around a little bit so 
I'm going to shape that top lip. That top lip isn't sort of flat. It's quite, um, it's quite thick. So adding this little curve on the bottom of this lip will show the thickness. It'll put the thickness of it in. And then obviously these darker bits come out of come out and under that lip. And again on this side so we've got that little thickness of lip showing there so I'm just moving to a little circular motion there to just give me a little sort of diffused line a diffused edge in fact I'm going to go to a little circular motion on that side as well actually just to blend that out a little bit but you can see hopefully that by creating that sort of a uh, curved line on the bottom it starts to add the thickness to his to his lip and just gently blend that out there because that's uh, you can see a bit of fur direction but there's also quite a bit of sort of shading in there so I want to just blend that out with a circular motion, that little bit there. And then coming around here. And we're getting up towards the, and we're getting up towards the top layers now. So now I'm starting to think about, I mean, I've been thinking about the detail all the way through, but there are some sort of areas where you knew that perhaps you could uh, use the circular motions or you know you were just sort of putting the darker layers in but I am thinking about the top layers now I'm thinking about the detail so I'm looking at what the fur is going to look like on the top layers because that's what we're going to see on the final portrait so I'm sort of looking for the direction if I can see the direction on the portrait obviously if I can't see direction on the portrait then um, I wouldn't necessarily try to put it in if you can't see it on the reference photograph then you can't see it for a reason. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily try and put something in that I can't see in terms of direction. But if it's there, I want to um, try and get the suggestion of it onto the final portrait. And I'm keeping my lines quite far apart in here because obviously there's quite a lot of light coming through here. But then it does go a little bit darker around here. And under there. And then I want to take the warm grey too and gently blend out the strokes that we've put down there. So I'm going to take a warm grey four and gently blend that lip out to make sure that it's clear that it is a rounded lip with some uh, depth to it rather than just a flat sort of flap of skin that's coming over. I want it to look like it has got some thickness to it and just blend that lip up into that, that crease where those two um, parts of the, the muzzle join quite a dark line up there so we do want to uh, keep that nice and dark just using a warm grey four to just bring this together a little bit on the bottom and darken that down a little bit when you're going over those lighter areas I'm not going over the uh, the darker areas only because it wouldn't matter you know putting the light one over the darker area wouldn't really do anything and then back in with this dark sepia down here just to 
make sure that this is nice and dark on the bottom of this jaw which we'll address that that little bit a little bit more as we move down onto the neck so just to add a bit of detail into this this area here I'm just going to take a, a slice tool you could take a, a craft knife doesn't really matter I'm just going to use it to remove a little bit of the pigment from this area here a couple of little stray which is a little stray hair there actually that I'm going to pop in a couple of little stray hairs And then with the Caran d'Ache white, I'm just going to go over a few of them. I'm not trying to make these completely white. I want some of the colour to show through from underneath. I haven't sort of scratched all the way back. I haven't removed all of the pigment with the slice tool. Um, I haven't gone all the way back to the, the paper. I've just gone back to those first layers, that uh, warm grey one or you know, perhaps a bit of the grey that's showing through. That's all I want to do. I want them tinted. So I'm just blending them out, really. I'm not necessarily trying to make them look completely white. And I've just gone over that little one there with a warm grey five, just on the edge of it, just to tone that down a little bit. I don't want it to be bright white. I just want it to... Um, if you look closer, you can see that there's a little hair there, but otherwise I don't want it to sort of jump off the page at me. Same with that one. I'm just going to tone the top of it down with that grey. There we go. But this will come together a little bit more and make a little bit more sense as we go through the rest of the neck and blend the rest of the neck in. This will uh, make a lot more sense, this section. Um, here. But there we go, we have his jaw pretty much finished now. We can move on to the uh, neck and then obviously down onto the body. So I think I'm going to leave it there for this video. So if you've only just found these tutorials for this uh, little French bulldog, you might like to check out this playlist here. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button before you leave. And if you want to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.